It's Pink Friday to the best launch of 2023. In part one of this video series, we delved into scent ration, transference, and the halting effect. These are the three psychological strategies that Nicki Minaj used in the pre-launch stage of Pink Friday 2 and have been getting so much pre-sales, so much buzz, so much hype, so much excitement for an album that's predicted to get the highest number of sales this year for a hip-hop album. By the way, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the love you guys have shown part one of this video. I truly, truly appreciate that. So, now that we are at the mid-launch stage, the buzz is not dying. In fact, it's looking like it's trickled over to mainstream media. Because initially, in the pre-launch stage, Nikki was mainly focused on her community and fans, the Babs. But it looks like now everyone else is seeing the effect of the launch. So in part two of this video, I will break down three more psychological strategies that Nikki is using in the mid-launch stage to ensure that Pink Friday 2 goes down in the history books. Let's get into it. So before I tell you what collective intelligence means, I want you to look at something. Now look at this. What you're looking at are fan pages and team pages around anything Nicki Minaj. There are thousands of these all over social media. I only showed you some on Twitter and then the others on Instagram. But I am sure that if you check other social media platforms, you will see others, right? So from what I've observed, these pages focus mainly on Nicki Minaj, the artist. What I mean is that they are always posting stats of things she's achieved, her songs, her videos, sound bites of things she said. So they are focused more on the business side of Nikki more than the life side. So collective intelligence is a psychological term used to describe the shared or group intelligence that emerges from collaboration and collective efforts. So the collective intelligence of the Babs opening fan and team pages gives Nikki more buzz as she's not the one pushing it herself, rather it's others saying it. This works psychologically because it creates a sense of social proof, which is the tendency of people to follow the actions of others and the opinions of others, especially when they are uncertain or unfamiliar with something. So when people see that there are many others talking about or praising Nikki or recommending Nikki, they are more likely to be influenced by them and become interested in her as well. This can also create a positive feedback loop where more attention leads to more engagement, which leads to more attention and so on. This has been working particularly well for Pink Friday too, because even if the algorithm lets you miss a post from Nikki herself, there's a high possibility that you will run into a fan page or a team page of hers. So this causes you to feel something in the second psychological strategy that we are going to break down. One of the critiques of Nicki Minaj during the years was that she was not relatable or that she wasn't authentic. It didn't help that she had all of these alter egos like Roman, Barbie, Harajuku. People felt like these alter egos made her seem distant and artificial. But with this launch, I've been observing something interesting. Nikki has been using secondary identification to its fullest. So secondary identification is a psychological term that refers to the process of identifying with someone else who shares similar experiences, goals, or characteristics. It's a way of creating a sense of belonging and connection with others who are perceived as similar or relatable. We've seen her show some sides of her doing her 73 questions with Vogue recently. For example, even though she maintained her animated persona throughout the interview, I couldn't help but notice the relatable snippets she shared, like her food choices, which the Babs immediately went to create on Twitter. And she also seemed a bit more grounded. And another thing that I've observed is the mother bear traits she displayed during her intervention with Soldier Boy and the whole J. Cole thing, right? And even the Barbie song in the summer can be classified as secondary identification because we saw almost everyone create something with that song during the summer. You couldn't turn around on social media and not hear the Barbie song. Finally, in her Vogue issue, she opened more than usual. You can go and read that as well. So by using secondary identification for Pink Friday too, Nikki is slowly erasing the perception that she's not relatable. 
this is in turn making people anticipate the album even more because you're like you know what she might open up more inside the album and share other sides of her that we haven't seen this is why the pre-order sales and predictions are off the rules right and speaking of pre-orders let's talk about the final psychological strategy that nikki has used to generate sales when I saw the pricing and bundling of Pink Friday 2, I said, hmm, Nikki is using positive anticipatory utility. That's a mouthful. But what PAU is, it's a psychological benefit that people get from looking forward to an event that they expect to be pleasurable. So by offering different incentives and the surprises every Friday that I've said on um, part one of this series, Nikki is increasing the positive anticipation of her fans and making them more willing to pre-order the album. By the way, how much do you think she's going to sell with this album? Before I continue, drop that in the comments, let me know. This strategy can also reduce the negative effect effects of temporal delay. So people are not like feeling negatively that I've paid money right now or of something that I'm not going to get. They're actually excited because as well as, as you've paid, she's providing free products, exclusive content snippet, fan interaction. So she's enhancing the positive effect and emotional connection more. And this can make people feel loyal and satisfied with the coaches that they haven't even experienced yet. But they're just okay with that and then they're more likely to share word of mouth if they feel that dopamine positive effect. That's why there's so much buzz for the album that hasn't even dropped yet. Like it's going to drop on December 8th. I cannot wait for December 8th because now that we've looked at the mid launch stage in part three, which will have to be after December 8th, we will have to look at the quality of the album itself, the launch offer. We have to look at the long term effect of the album, the consumer and the critic reception of the feedback of the album. So do make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that we will analyze part three together and spread the word about this channel. Thank you so much for the love you've shown the video so far. And I'll see you in part three.